Your attention, please. The Disc Geek Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Diz Geek Podcast. This is the podcast that's all about Disney theme parks, but mostly Disneyland. I'm your host, Daniel Hale. What's up, everybody? So last week, I introduced the concept of minisodes. And the idea being, hey, you know, I don't want to wait once a month to release content. Let's see if I could do little mini episodes with the news and stuff you know, in little bite-sized chunks, but have them come out more frequently. That was sort of the idea behind them, and people really seem to like them. So I am really happy about that. So in this episode, this is going to be a normal, regular, everyday episode that we've always done, so I'm going to include news, and we're going to have a main topic, sort of like we always do. It's going to be Galaxy's Edge again. (laughs) It's going to be at Galaxy's Edge for a while. I'm thinking this might be the last Galaxy Edge episode, though. But what I'm going to do different, I'm going to do the news portion of the show by myself, without uh, Tommy, Chris, and Jess. And again, the idea being so that when I actually bring them on later tonight, we won't be up till midnight, my time. And then I'm like getting all like tired and stuff like that. So it's actually 3.30 in the afternoon and I could do the news portion of the show right now. And then when they join in later, it'll, it won't be so late. It'll be semi-early for them anyway. For me, it's going to be 10 p.m. <laughs> uh, but, you know. Shorter, shorter for them, shorter for me. And then my poor wife, who's trying to go to bed behind me, won't have to deal with it. So uh, let's see how this works out, y'all. Let's head on over to the Main Street newsstand. Haven't said that in a while. You know, when I uh, first started the show, I used to say, let's go under the tunnel and head over to the Main Street newsstand. And that was me not remembering that the, the Main Street newsstand in Disneyland is actually before the tunnel. So I actually stopped saying it all together. Chris pointed that out to me and I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I said it again for some reason. Old times, old times. So anyway, most of the news that we have is Disneyland uh, Galaxy's Edge related. Uh, There's just lots of stuff going on, lots of changes. The parks um, are making adjustments to Galaxy's Edge as we speak. Uh, They're finding out what works, what doesn't work, what they're going to change. They're changing entrances. It's just, it's it's fascinating to watch. But uh, before before we get to Galaxy's Edge, really quickly, last week on the Minnesota, I talked about how Tale of the Lion King is debuting at California Adventure. And it debuted, it's open, it's out, everyone seems to be enjoying it. But I didn't know what that stage was. And uh, it turns out they built a stage, I guess, in the area where normally people would stand around for World of Color. Uh, That's based on a video that I'm seeing that the Disney Parks blog released. And it looks like, oh, okay, I see where it is. It's kind of like the seating area, World of Color. I could see in the background, I could see the um, Mickey's Fun Wheel. It's not called that anymore. And I could see, what's it called? Like Pixar Pal Around or something? I don't even know. Uh, And I could see California Screaming, which is Pixar Screaming or whatever. (laughs) Oh, it's the Incredicoaster. And then I could also see in the background um, Ariel's Grotto, which I know is not Ariel's Grotto. I haven't seen Pixar Pier yet, folks, so... I'm not, I'm not caught up on the lingo over there. But yeah, it looks, uh, it looks cool. So next week, we're going to have um, a mini-sode again. And we're going to have some audio from Connie Moreno. From, she used to be on the Disneyland Gazette podcast. And she, uh, she comes and helps us out. And she sends us little recordings. And she sends me pictures from the park and keeps me updated. And uh, she's going to review the show for us. So we'll have some audio of that next week. But for now, uh, it's there. And now I know where that stage is. Alrighty, so moving on to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge news. Disney wants you to know that there is no cosplay allowed at Disneyland and at Galaxy's Edge. 
Uh, especially, well, if you are over 14 years old, uh, you're not allowed to wear costumes. Uh, even though they sell what they don't want you to wear, which is kind of weird to me. Uh, over at Universal Studios, Harry Potter, uh, they sell robes and they let you wear them. But uh, Disneyland does not want you to do that. And they have posted a blog post on the Disney Parks blog of what's permitted and what's not permitted. So I'm sure you've all heard of Disney bounding, which is basically it's kind of like dressing up as Disney characters, but using like everyday clothing or something like that. And, you know, they've made specialized clothing for Galaxy's Edge. I don't know if they sell it there, but they have Disney bounding. And so the article shows a couple of images of like, this is permittable. Um, and it's basically piecing together traditional clothing of items that can be worn together. It kind of, it looks like Ray, you know, so I'm looking at a picture right now and it's this girl's standing there and she has normal clothes. It looks like she has leggings on and like a sweater and it's, it's the colors and the way she's wearing it looks like Ray. And there's someone in Jedi, again, not robes, but like kind of like a tunic and wearing tan pants. So it can be done. They just don't want you wearing masks, robes. Uh, they don't want face paint. They don't want headwear like helmets. They don't want you uh, showing up with weapons like blasters or holsters or anything like that. Although they will allow lightsabers, but they don't want body armor. No, you can't go showing up. With masks, like looking like a stormtrooper. If you're in the 501st, sorry, can't show up. So anyway, Disney wants you to know that, and I'm I'm passing on the message. Okay, so the next part of uh, Galaxy's Edge news that I have is in regards to virtual queues. Uh, they are now trying to cut back on the long lines that Uga's Cantina is seeing and that Savvy's Workshop is seeing. Now, Savvy's Workshop is where you can uh, do the build your own lightsaber experience. And so now they're implementing this system where you show up, you give them your money, and then they're going to take your phone number. And then they text you at some point. And then after you receive the text and you show up, then the wait will be like 15 minutes or something like that as opposed to three hours. And they're doing the same thing at Uga's Cantina. Uh, that's another place that is just getting super, super long waits. And it's not good. So they're trying out this texting thing. And so we'll see how it works. I believe when we talk about Galaxy's Edge later with Tommy, he'll talk about that because I think that's what they did. So that's cool. And then finally, regarding Galaxy's Edge news, uh, there's a merchandise situation. And a friend of ours, Vincent Bubba Alvarez, he's on Sorcerer Radio, uh, put on social media uh, a text or a message or some kind of a blog post or an Instagram post that someone he knows posted. It's someone he says that he trusts and is reliable, but it's still, it's kind of like unofficial. But it has to do with all of the merchandise that's going on at a Galaxy's Edge and how they do not have certain things. So, for example... The, the credit gift cards were completely sold out. And the initial run was only 15,000 of them because they didn't think they would sell as much as they did. And they, they were not sure when they're coming back in stock. Another thing that's going on is with these uh, kyber crystals. And so yellow and white, those colors are completely gone. They didn't think that those colors would be popular. And it turns out they are. So they ordered another run of them, but we're not sure when they're going to drop. And then here's another thing that's an issue with these kyber crystals. There's a black kyber crystal. And according to this text, this is a major bone of contention with the manager. He is not happy with the issues that kyber, these black kyber crystals have caused. It says the short story that there are no crystals anymore. The long story is, is that they were pulled from the shelves last Wednesday. It says between a cast member being pushed over for people trying to find a black one and nearly taking out an entire display of people crowding it, uh, people are camping out in front of the shop so that others can't get in. And then they're just being scalped on eBay. Uh, Disney's not happy with this. So they're putting the black ones, they're pulling it basically from the displays at this point. 
and they're they're rethinking this whole thing with black kyber crystals. This kind of goes into what I I believe we may have talked about last week uh, with these metal sporks. When you go and you get food at ooh, I can't remember the name. It's like Cargan. It's like Docking Bay something. Uh, it's basically the food the food area. Uh, they have these sporks and they're metal and they're cool and they're futuristic looking and they're really neat. Unfortunately, people are stealing them and they're showing right up on eBay and it's turned into a thing. And from what I understand, they're pretty much gone at this point. They're replaced with plastic. Sadly, uh, I, I, we may have talked about this last week. I don't, I honestly don't remember, but you know, it's one of those things where it's like, this is why we can't have nice things. You know, uh, they're being stolen. What can you do? Let's see, what else did this thing talked about? It talked about the creature shop and how um, uh, the cat-like creature uh, sold out. and it, uh, But they are expecting more. And then let's see. Something about the cantina and they only have Bantha coasters left. And if you weren't at the bar, you have to ask for them specifically. More are coming, but they just, they, they're not, they're not here yet. Uh, and anyway, that's just all, that's all speculation, but I thought it was interesting about the situation with merchandise going on, because as you know, merchandising is just as big as everything else that's going on with Galaxy's Edge. People want that stuff and it's all cool stuff, but it's just sad that like they have to pull like the black ones because people are camping out and shoving people. I mean, it's just a crystal people. It's fake. It's just a black crystal, dude. You could buy that anywhere. Come on. Uh, kind of sad. And the thing with the sporks is, is is bad too. But I don't know. It is what it is. Anyway, that's our news segment for this episode. Let's move on to our main feature topic. And now we present our feature presentation on the Disky Podcast. Well, come to this happy place. Welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. All right, everybody, we're back, and it's time to talk to the rest of the Disney crew. Let me introduce them. First up, the most grating voice in podcasting, Tommy Allison. Tommy, Disney what's up? podcasting. Let's try that again. Oh, sorry. The most <laughs> grating voice in Disney podcasting, Tommy Allison. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Yeah. We also have Jess Jones. Hey guys. And Chris Allison, what's up? Hey. Very good, everybody. So, listen, we want to talk more about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Uh, our last episode just gave her review of the new land, and uh, it was a cast member preview, very first ever cast member preview. And she had some thoughts, and uh, she has since been back and. Presumably, things are going a little bit more smooth now, Jess. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, it is much better. The second time I went was the day that I had envisioned my cast preview to be. So shout out to Bonnie for inviting me and adding me to her reservation to make up for my lackluster cast <laughs> preview day. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Right. <laughs> What was different? Like, what did they figure out? Like, did they figure out lines? Um, they... they now 
have uh, if you want to get into the cantina, you have to get in a line as soon as you get into the land and they take reservations. They still tell you there's no guarantee that you'll get in, but um, they try to do a count and then cut off the line before it gets to the point where you won't get in. Yeah. Kind of like when you do a meet and greet, you know how they cut it off if they know you won't actually get up to the character. So they are trying to do that, and they seem to be pretty successful with it. Um, you stand in a long line, and you make a reservation. Uh, only one person needs to be in the line to do it. You tell them how many people, and then they will take your phone number, and they will text you. Um, I Usually it's about two hours later, and they tell you how long it'll be before you get the text. And then as soon as you get the text, you have, I think you have 10 to 15 minutes to get over there and then stand in another line again just to get in but it's usually pretty quickly that you you get in they've Once got you it get down. in the second line it goes about 30 to 40 minutes oh no uh it's not that long i mean i've done it twice now and both times first time we had to wait for a table because i was in the wheelchair and bonnie was in a scooter and mm-hmm. we both needed to get out of those vehicles and sit so we did have to wait a little bit longer because of that um, because the bar is mostly standing room only, in case people don't know that. That is why the capacity is so big, because it's mostly standing room only. Um, and then yesterday, I was willing to just wheel my chair up to the part of the bar that's lower, just for that purpose. But um, they didn't even talk about that option. They just had a stand off to the side for a table, which I thought was going to be a while. And then like not even five minutes later, they had us coming in. So it wasn't bad. It's really not that bad. That's good. But it's just this initial like waiting for the text to come. But meanwhile, you can do other things. Yeah. But yeah, you're roaming around the park and, or, you know, the area and doing whatever you wanted to do. You, you can go on the ride or you can go shopping or you can just wander around and check everything out. You can eat, um, you know, so it's nice. It's kind of like basically having a fast pass for getting into the cantina. Right on. So that's good. They figured that out. Um, and they also now have uh, the words restrooms outside of the restrooms on big signs. <laughs> um, I heard they actually made those like practically overnight uh, during the cast previews. Yeah. They, they made them and they were up uh, like a, within a week. We had them um, for like some of the last couple of cast previews. So mm-hmm. they listened to all of us right away with that one, I guess. It's yeah. it's it's one of those things where the they probably had the design ready to go, and they were just gonna shoot it out if you guys complained yeah. like they thought you probably would. You know what I mean? That's what I They're was just saying. Like, Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, you know, we've already got a design ready just in case. Yeah, yeah. they had to have because they literally made it within a few days and then put them up. Yeah. I mean, they're not just like stupid, cheesy restroom signs. They actually look like they belong there. Yeah. Yeah. I was just saying that Imagineering, like they have their plans and they have their way they want everything to look and and be. And then it gets passed over to the operations people. And then they're the ones who have to deal with like, oh, there's no signs anywhere. Oh, the... You know, you know what I mean? Like they like right. so they they have to adjust. It's just like the windows at Buena Vista Street. You know, the Imagineers wanted something that looked vintage and cool, but meanwhile, no one was going in and buying anything because nobody realized they were actually stores. So exactly. management <laughs> went in and said, "Change the windows." I know they were cool, but we got to show that this merchandise in here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Galaxy's Edge is having any problems with merchandise right now. No. Oh, no, except no. for the la- except that they're selling out and showing up on eBay and True. people are fighting over the black crystal and all this stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. so I want to talk to Chris and Tommy really quick. We'll get into the Millennium Falcon because I know that's, that's something we definitely want to uh, debate and talk about, but I just wanted to get Tommy, I'll start with you, your overall thoughts uh, on the land. Overall thoughts, yeah, um, or whatever. Just say whatever. Yeah, you want. yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, when we walked in, I just couldn't believe how big the area was. Um, especially when you were where we were when we were waiting uh, as, as we were coming um, in from Critter Country into uh, Galaxy's Edge, and I felt like, 
wow, there's a lot of room. This <laughs> this place can hold a lot of people. And then when they let us go in into the into deeper into the land and past the uh, the rise of the resistance uh, uh, attraction, and you just began to see uh, it. It just seemed to get larger and larger and, and wider and wider. And then when you got to the first bridge area you go oh my gosh wow you know it just seemed just so overcoming overwhelming and massive yeah it just uh, yeah massive is the word but not only that you have not only the size and scope of it but you also have the sound effects so you have like a lot of weird sounds uh weird animal noises uh, creature voices i guess uh noises and then you have the sounds of um, spaceships coming in, landing and taking off and everything like that around you. And so you don't have a typical like fantasy land music playing in the background. There's no music playing in any in, in any area that I was in except the, the cantina. cantina. But you can you know, hear that music a little bit out of the uh, a little bit out of the the doorway. It does right. project pretty far, but 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 it doesn't, it doesn't. It's not. There's not like this ongoing background music of the park or you know a different area. Like if you go into the first order area, you'll hear first order music and and things like that. You go over to the Millennium Funk and you hear, you know the you know hot and and chewy music and stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so you don't you don't hear the jizz whalers is what you're saying. Yeah, right. So Happy what, Chris. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think it, it's what? just it was just it was that was one thing and then I just felt like um you know, when I when I got to the point where I saw the Millennium Falcon it, it definitely was it was pretty amazing, and we were there at the probably the best hour to see the uh, Millennium Falcon. And that's the blue hour, you know, the magic hour between uh, just at, right after sunset. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, and just oh gosh, it, it was just. And I, I think I've shared a couple of those pictures with you. Yes, um, it, it, there's just some really great pictures of the Millennium Falcon and and the uh, just the sky, and then inside the also in the area where the shopping area is the the outdoor shopping area uh, i mean it just looks so neat it, it's a really just a neat experience and you don't feel like there's there's just lots of you just you just feel like there's a lot of room and i don't know you know i've heard that they only allow about four thousand people in per four hour period so people are doing different experiences such as you know they're eating they're getting their lightsaber they're going to the cantina they're going checking out the first order stuff they're checking out the marketplace um you know people are getting in line for the they're get, they're getting their pictures taken there's character interaction there's you know people are exploring the land um there's there's all this there's a lot of sensory things that are going on around you from the standpoint of sounds of the of this you definitely feel like you're in a different place otherworldly because you do this is stuff that you don't see anywhere other probably than in a, in a, watching a star wars movie right 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 so you definitely feel like you're in the world of star wars you're on a you definitely feel like you're in a, on a different planet and there's a lot of stuff that i'm not familiar with that i you know that you know, as I was talking with some friends, oh, a lot of this stuff has to do with Star Wars Rebels and, you know, I guess post 2014 canon so <laughs> of Star Wars. Let, let me you know? let me give an, a, a really geeky reference. Let me give a really yeah. Star Wars geeky reference that true Star Wars fans like will know what this is because this blew me away. So I watch a YouTube channel called Resort TV One every once in a while. They do yeah. live streams. So they went to Star Wars. They went to Galaxy's Ed and did a live stream. Right. And uh, I watched it. And that's when I really, really got the sense of the scale is watching them sort of walk around and see right. how tall the buildings were and stuff. Right. But they did this thing and they didn't, they didn't notice it. They didn't catch it, but I caught it. 
Uh, they were in they were in one of the stores. I want to say it was Savvy's Workshop, but not no no. I'm sorry, the the cantina. I want to say they were walking out of the cantina or the side of the cantina, like they kind of like walked through it really quick. Or I, I don't remember exactly what store that they were in, but they were heading for a door, and then the door slid open, and then then they walked past, and then they went outside, and outside of this door was this panel on the left side that had this blue crisscross light. And when the door opened and they walked by it, it did this weird flashing animation mo- 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 motion. And you might go, wow, well, that's not a big deal. It looked exactly the same as the scene when Luke uh, and, and Obi-Wan went into the cantina in the original Star Wars. And, yeah. and then C-3PO tried to walk in. And then this yes, the sensor detector. went off. The droid detector. Yeah. Well, it looked it exactly like it. Your droid mm. will set that off if you've got it in your in your in your that box. That is um that blew me away more than anything. <laughs> right, right. So Isn't that crazy. Yeah. As a geek, as someone who's been right. watching these movies all my life, right. seeing that was like, all right, the Imagineers really, really know what they're doing. Like that yeah. gave me so much. Like just that blew me away, right? And I think what it, what's amazing is just like the size and scale of it. I mean, you definitely feel like things are bigger than you, and it's it just like wow, this is bigger than I thought it would be. You know, when people say it's fourteen acres, people think, oh man, it's about as big as Toontown. No, 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 this is not bigger. This is way bigger than. It's Toontown. one acre bigger it, than Cars Land, or like yeah. two. And we and don't even th- have the whole thing open. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. We didn't. And, we didn't see all fourteen acres. We only yeah, saw we like. See, yeah. Exactly. And so the the okay. that, there's that, and then I, I think there's 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 everything on the sensory level, but there's also on a linear level, where you know everything you can touch, see, smell, that sort of thing, you're amazed, you're blown away. But on a non-linear level, the, the, you which you can't see and smell, which is the the communications that can only you can only detect with the within the Disneyland app, the Disneyland Play app, and I think Chris should share a little bit about that because he's discovered some things and learned some things and how to use uh, use that and what he's discovered. I mean, I didn't really discover a whole lot. I was just reading a bunch of fun stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, you were going you up can... to the doors and you were able to quote hack the door. Yeah, so doing some fun just, stuff with that. Just tell us about that. I mean, you basically walk up to any of the the pads on a lo- the doors. If the, it's kind of like this square that's got like a blue or a red light on it, and it's a lot like. Um, do you guys remember the? Was it Legends of Frontierland? Is that what that was called? Right. Yeah. When, when you had two warring factions the entire time, <laughs> it was basically like that, where uh, you can either choose to be part of like the imperial team or the resistance resistance is blue imperial is red and then you just kind of like you can depending on whatever side you are if you hack into that thing you kind of take that quote unquote command post right and so you can do that across the whole land and so like you can try and like hack them all for your team does that make sense yeah and you yeah, and you get like notified on your phone and stuff when when things happen, and then you can also hack into like the the comms towers, right? And, like there's communications people, happening, read, yeah, around you read, too. Read people's messages and have all that yeah. fun stuff. Hack into like the the ships at the entrance. Yep. The over by the the critter country entrance, you can hack into the ships over there, and there's lots of fun stuff to do with that. And yeah, I think that the I think the um and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I noticed that the um, stormtroopers can will notice if you're on a on a on a resistance channel and you're communicating on a resistance channel or on a or or you're on or you're are you part of the resistance? Are you or are you part of the first order? Are you are you are you sure you're on the right channel? You'll go back to a public channel, not a, a private channel. You know what I mean? So I, I think they can. I can. I think they can know. I think they can know if you're on either a resistance channel or a uh, first order channel, which is kind of interesting. 
Yeah. But I, I, I did notice that there there was like a like again this there's like I said nonlinear something happening, you know, over these communications through the Disneyland play app. Now you want to talk about the Disney how the Disneyland play app? Well, I think we should return back to the Disneyland play app a little later because it does work with the Millennium Falcon too. Yeah, it does. So I still don't know how that how that worked to be entirely honest cuz I got off the Falcon and all of a sudden my credits were automatically on my phone and I was blown away. Yeah. Yeah, that happened to my friend and we were like, "Did you turn it on before you got on the ride?" and he was no. like, "No." <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> just gave it to me. I was like, "What the heck? How do they know?" Yeah, but then like I I finally put some Disney app on my phone for it and nothing happened, so I just deleted it. I'm like, "Okay, I'm never going to do this. I don't care." <laughs> yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. So basically, once you enter Galaxy's Edge, I guess we'll talk about it now. You open the Play Disney Parks app. You say that you're in Batu. It'll check to make sure that you actually are, and then your phone turns into a data pad. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and so you based on where you are is like kind of how you're able to do different things. So once you're in Batu, you can't do something on your data pad that you know, would affect something on the other side of Batu. It has to be in your near, like probably like 20 feet radius, right? So say you're hacking into a comms tower, you won't be able to get one way over by Oga's Cantina if you're all the way at the entrance. Yeah. Does that make sense? You actually have to be like near those things. It's uh, it's geotagged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. But, yeah, and the way that you can tell like what you're hacking into is that... Uh, It'll be like, oh, nearby hackable devices, and then you look, and then there's a picture of, of that thing. And so you touch that, and that's how you know you're you're hacking that specific one. And it'll let you know if you've already hacked something so you don't accidentally you know, waste your time and do it a second or third time if you don't want to. And there's things for you to scan as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah there's, there's like lots little, of lots of like QR boxes. codes. Yeah. Yeah, on a lot of the on a lot of the stuff, and you can see what's in the shipments and things like that. That'd be cool if, like, like, because I know there's a resistance character walking around, like the 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 rebel spy or yeah. whoever it is. That'd be cool mm-hmm. if they gave you some like code words, like she would know, and then you yeah. can have a, a special interaction with her because you use the app because you found there's, out. They may have that stuff in there. Yeah, there is some stuff in there. Yeah, and then so you could talk I, to her I about that. Strongly suggest stuff. using it so that you can, uh, so that you can have those experiences because they're definitely worth doing like probably honestly maybe only for a little bit on your first time but on your second third fourth time it's really worth it's really worth uh going through with the app it's a lot of fun that's cool let's go into the millennium falcon really quick i just Mm -hmm. thought it was meh tommy what did you think well uh can i talk about the queue yeah, I think the queue is amazing. I think it's oh, amazing yeah. to uh, just the way the the Falcon is placed with the Batu um, uh, spires behind it. Uh, it's just it's mind blowing. It looks so amazing at night. The colors, uh, the fireworks behind it. I, we Beautiful. we just got the best time. We had just some of the just amazing. And then when you're waiting in line, um, the Falcon will light will light up, and there will be steam coming out of it periodically. Uh, will come out and uh, you know lights are blinking on and off on it, on it uh, which is cool. So it shows you it's you know it's about ready to take off or do do some things. Uh, the gate is down. The uh, I mean the ramp is down. It's too bad that you can't enter in the Falcon that way <laughs> to yeah. take off and do your venture. But you know um, it's still fine because when you go into the queue, the queue is very amazing. It's it's wide. It's beautiful. It's beautiful from the standpoint it, it has again the Star Wars Star Wars feel to it. Just and, to interrupt for just just um, a second. Just to interrupt for just a second. I want to make sure I'm clear on this. When I say Jess that said it was meh, she's talking about the ride ride itself. She's not talking about the queue and the interior right. and right, right, Jess. I mean you everything else oh, yeah, except for the everything. ride I was just itself. Disappointed in the ride itself. Yeah, I just want to make sure so, that that's clear. Yeah. yeah, but everything is yeah. Everything was great. I said everything was beautiful in the land, and, and the food is very tasty, but overpriced. But <laughs> yeah, I love the land and everything. I just was disappointed in the ride itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the when I got to you know, when they get to, get you to Hondo, when they split you off and they get you to Hondo, 
I, you know, I thought the Hondo thing was very cool. Mm-hmm. Um, the Rebecca thought story. it was a person, and so I told her it was, and she's like, "Wow, that's amazing." <laughs> And then she's like, it would suck to be him. And then later on, she's like, wait, that's not a person. Never mind. (laughs) And then, you know, when they split you off left and right, and then you go down, you're waiting in the hallway. And uh, then they start that the tension starts, you know. And the first time we went through, it was really cool. Uh, Good storytelling, good cast member there, very active. You you made it believable with everything. I thought that's for, and then you, then you're handed your, um, your, your cards, your tickets, you know, whatever, uh, your assignments for the for the for the for the uh, the ride, and then you're inside the the area, the waiting area, and um, the first time we, you know, you you go in, and you go, wow, this is just like the Millennium Falcon. It's like the movie. Yeah, it's blow, it blows you away, <laughs> and it was so, it's crazy, you know. And then uh, the second time we were in the same area. Uh, uh, there was the alarm. alarm. The alarm went off, and everyone was going crazy. And they go, "Press the red button! Press the red button!" And everyone was, "Where's the red button?" Everyone's going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you have multiple groups of people waiting to, to, to do their to go on and and fly a Millennium Falcon. And so, um, you know, you got a lot of activity. I mean, you're not going to be bored waiting to do your ride and then no you're not in there that long and then you know yeah yeah and then when you're you're you're, you know when you walk into the millennium falcon when it's your turn oh my gosh you're in the millennium falcon it's like my childhood is it came alive you know yeah it it just it just ignited i mean you know it was burning now it's a full-blown flame you know so it's good this is crazy real i mean this is oh my gosh this is amazing and you know, I thought the experience. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna share about the ride experience other than don't, don't fly the Millennium Falcon with pe- pilots who have been drinking at the cantina ah. beforehand. <laughs> hey, we didn't do so bad the second time. Yeah, you were less intoxicated. <laughs> it was five minutes after. <laughs> yeah, my sons were flying the Millennium Falcon just right after they've been to the cantina. So yeah, definitely, it's interesting. But I, I'll tell you, it, it's definitely it's, better to be a pilot. I have yeah, so much yeah I think the best pilot. position is to be a pilot. Yeah. Second best position is is the gunner, of course. Yeah. And then the engineer. Eh, it's. All I right. loved the engineer. But oh my you know God. what? It's it's fine. <laughs> um, it's it's I I, I it's uh, Hondo is funny when he comes <laughs> up. He he he, crit, he criticizes your ride at the end. You know, and yeah. and like we crashed so many times, we messed up, and he go, and so he's like, oh, oh, this is look doesn't look too good. This doesn't look, this is not too, this is this is not this is not good. This is you know, it's like you know, like uh, it's like we like got like twenty percent or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then we walk out, and you hear sparks flying and stuff. You hear the noise of sparks coming when you're off the ride. You hear sparks going, and there's like a part of the the building has has been messed up because you had crash landed. You know, it's so great. That's yeah, awesome. there's just a lot of things like that could go on. But um, yeah, you, it's definitely it's a maze in there. The way they have, you know, I, it's crazy. It's it's crazy amazing. There's a lot to take in, right? Yeah, there's a lot to take in. Um, I think the best way to explain it is that the ride is basically a a big video game. Yeah. And and you know it's just that's what it is. It's a big video game, and it's gonna just takes and it, I think that makes it repeatable. You know, because mm-hmm. you know, you want you want to get better as you go along. So I yeah. mean, I I think that's a big deal. So I think uh, as the years go on, hopefully, and the months go on, we'll we'll have more chances to figure it out and learn about it and learn hacks and stuff like that, and <laughs> we'll all yeah. become very good flyers. You know, we'll see and how many. We'll all get to go to bed one day together. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I would. I would love to. I love to get through the time where you get. You all collect. We all collect like five coaxiums. You know, we'll do it. We'll you do know, it. Something like that. Uh, we got two in the last last time we did it together. But um, it, it, what I did notice is that there there was a glitch. Did you guys have any glitching? 
in the game. We didn't. We didn't have a glitch. Yeah, we did at the end because we remember um, before we came back, we went to the asteroid field for like a, a flash second, and then it and then it went. This is we're taking you home. Should we take take over? What are you that's talking what, about? We, that's because we didn't hit the um, we didn't hit the booster, so it took us into the asteroid field. Yeah, but that it, wasn't a, that wasn't a glitch. If if it was a glitch, it wouldn't have done that. Trust me, uh, oh, it wasn't okay. a glitch. No, I, I heard sometimes based on our based on our choices. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was a different experience based on the fact that I didn't hit the boosters in time. <laughs> oh, okay. So I can blame you. All right. So don't yeah. fly and and drink. Don't Just drink and fly. Don't drink it's not that it's not that bad, guys. Okay, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, right. The drinks are pre-mixed. Okay. It's Honestly, not that I, bad. I don't know how you could even have a buzz after going to the cantina. <laughs> I mean, they only let you get two drinks, and yeah, they're already made, so they're not strong at all. Uh, I'm a lightweight, though. So, mm-hmm. so the cantina. Uh, I'll give you my. Um, no wait, I, wait, wait. What about my smugglers run? Rizzo? Yeah, let's let's hear Chris's okay, smugglers all right. run, and then we'll talk about the kitchen. Let's do that that well, that demographic that it was made for. Talk about it. It was insane and it was incredible, and you're all wrong. <laughs> that's that's my choice. I, you know, I, I, not, Star Wars. Everyone that's complaining that I didn't get to just sit down and watch the stupid ride. Is, I I don't understand that at all because the whole point of the ride is that you're flying the Millennium Falcon and if you're the engineer, right. of course you're going to be hitting a million buttons. If you're the gunner, of course you're going to be hitting a million buttons. In the movie, they're not just looking out the window the whole time. They're trying to fix everything. What do you expect? That's <laughs> half the fun. It's so much fun, guys. Everyone, I agree. Wrong. It's a lot of fun. I I, I think I would like to. I like to have the buttons more in front of me than to the side. Yeah, so but, you, know, you know who really disliked the ride? They have screens on the side to entertain you while you're <laughs> while you're not looking at the other screen. I, you're, you're, you're Nine right. screens wasn't enough for you. <laughs> There's uh, a lot of things going on, buddy. I, I wonder, Chris, if you would have liked it as much if you hadn't had any drinks beforehand. The second day, I had a great time. Okay, I went <laughs> twice. Yeah. So, you know, Len Testa, and, Len Testa yeah, yeah. of Touring Plans... Uh, he has his show, the unofficial Disney Gist with Jim Hill, and mm-hmm. he talked about it. Unfortunately, he put that particular show behind a paywall, but I'm I actually subscribe to the show, so I so I heard it, and he very much disliked uh, the ride as well. And one of the things he said that I thought was really interesting is that he said the thing with the button pushing Tommy because you were talking about that you wish it was closer, like in front of you or something like that. He said, imagine trying to work on your computer at home and you're staring at your screen, but your keyboard and mouse was 90 degrees to the left of you. That's exactly. And, and you're yeah. trying to use a computer and you're turning your head and you're trying to type. <laughs> that's basically how what he said. But that's the, that's the fun of it to me is that you're freaking out the whole time trying to fly this thing with a million buttons. Yeah. That's what I loved about it is that it's just like, oh my God, it's, it's so much fun. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I just, <laughs> I, I noticed, I definitely noticed that the older people... Like Lynn and I, I haven't written it yet, so I can't. I, I'm not making any kind of a judgment. Uh, but like, I notice a lot of older people don't like it as much as the younger people. And even he, yep. he said the exact same thing that you just said, Jesse. He goes, "I realize that it's a ride that's not made for me. It's it's mm-hmm. a ride that's made for younger people, and and they will probably love it. But just for me, who wants to sit back and and just- guys." <laughs> everyone else, everyone that doesn't want to push buttons, guess what? There's an autopilot mode. Just now, see, that. that's what I heard. I heard that there was an autopilot mode, but yet everyone's saying that like, you have to push the buttons. But I heard that no, there's but, a way you could just push the button and let it do its thing and just sit back and enjoy. Yeah, there, right? There's an autopilot mode. That's what I thought. I did yeah, hear that. For all, for, all, for all six stations. But no, that's, that's awesome. I personally can't wait to write it myself. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad Chris loved it. I'm happy it's not... I'm happy it's not Star Tours. It's an incredible feat. There is zero latency yeah. issues whatsoever, yeah. which is absolutely incredible. We had no glitches, absolutely none whatsoever. The frame rate was consistent the entire time, which is insane, considering mm-hmm. how clear the quality of the of the picture is. Like they have to be running some serious computing power behind these things. It's insane how how clean it is. You guys have no idea how how big of a feat that is. You have no idea. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm in computers, so I do know. <laughs> it's, it no, is do, incredible. But I'm saying, like, my dad yeah. and Jess and stuff, like, you have no idea, like, 
when you pull that lever, you you go at the same time. There is no issues. <laughs> it's insane. Very cool. Yeah. Talk to us about the the cantina. Aside from Chris getting drunk. <laughs> ten out of ten. I suggest the yub nub. <laughs> yeah, you know the, uh, you know I, I thought it was really cool inside. I, I Rex is hilarious. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think I think he's very funny. I've got some good some good video. The music selection's funny. Um, it's kind of classic Star Wars. You know the the Katina music that you heard in the first the first Star Wars movie. We, fortunately, we were in a booth that could hold about I would say about maybe fifteen people. So we we were a party of six. There was a party of I think eight, and that was next to us. So we kind of sh- we shared a table. Mm-hmm. Um, the, it doesn't it it all it has all the uh, there's no food other than just some small nibbles, which are really kind of uh, uh, savory and salty. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. like I a pub mix that looks kind of alien. Yeah, alien. And then like there's, um, mix. it's kind of huh? like a chess. It's kind of like a Czech mix mix of that's alien Czech mix. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's you know it has one thing it had a barbecued flavor. Uh, it was just, just Some all spicy different. Wasabi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's what it was. Yeah. So I, I had a friend describe it as some something like you could buy at Ranch Ninety Nine. Right. <laughs> so it was okay. Um, the drinks and then the petri dish Jello with uh, pop rocks on top of it that tastes like cotton candy. I didn't have that. I haven't yeah. had any of the food. It, neither of it sounded good to me. Yeah. So I yeah. Asked, yeah. Yeah, I've seen so, people eating it online. It didn't look delicious, so right. So that that was it for food. But, you know, then you have the the drinks, and um, you know, of course, uh, what what the what do you guys have? You had the yub nub, right, Jer- uh, Chris? Yes, what did sir. Jeremy have? He had the yub nub. <laughs> oh, he had the yub nub too. Thing. You both. Yeah. But you also got the the pork drink, right? No, Becca did. Yeah. yeah what was that? That was the, the, the That's non-alcoholic, non-alcoholic one. Drink. So okay. there's a there's one for the kids so that your kid can have a very expensive mug, and then there's one for the adults so that they can have a very expensive mug. Okay, and then you have the beer flight, <laughs> which is what? Yes, which the, is the, the, rank- the Rancor Tooth, which I bought the second day because I decided I wanted it because it was not terrible. It was very okay. good. All right. It's four then- different... Uh, four different uh, beers from microbreweries. What did mom have? That what was that. That was like foaming and boma. A, a she boba. had, she had what was called the carbon freeze, which was like a, which was like a carbonated fruit drink that had uh, green apple boba in it, and it was delicious. Yeah, and it was bubbling. <laughs> yeah, because it had like dry ice in it, like yeah. the drinks at uh, at Pixar Pier. Yeah. Okay. It was a little, you know, they, they when you go in, uh, and the waiter comes up to or a waitress comes up to you, the, the, they want they would take your order and they want your credit card right away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, well, want, and, yeah, and, and then you sign for the drinks and then your drinks come, <laughs> and you know, then I, I I mean it's the fastest two hundred dollars I spent in forty five minutes, right? And it was awesome. Did Thank you guys you feel it was very cramped and tight in there? It's very small, but did it? Did they space it out well? Does it like you know? Everyone says that you know it can only hold about like 150 people, but the capacity sign says 264, 268, or something like that. Yeah, it says something so, close to that, yeah. So it, it's uh, to me it depends on the. I don't know. It depends. On, it didn't seem that. I mean, it was busy. Then it was a full crowd waiting for to get in when we went in. So it seems I mean, controlled, it capacity, though. You know, it's two two hundred people or more over two hundred people. But what I, I guess yeah. what I'm saying is that like they, they have the lines, they're doing the text thing, they're doing the virtual queue, and it seems yeah. like it's controlled it in there. It's, and, and it works. And, and even though it it's works. small, it doesn't necessarily feel like you're crowded in and you're like, like screaming at waitresses well, to get your like service. You're standing there it's watching like, the fireworks. And right. Like exactly. You can still exactly. move around. Right. Cool. I like that. I, I think that's cool. I mean, there's not really elbow room, but you're not also, you know, like shoulder to shoulder with strangers. Tommy, did you guys or anybody, did you guys leave on your own accord or did they have to no, throw you out? out? 
they push you out. Okay. Well, they, they yep. basically well they basically said like, hey, it's getting it's getting close to your time. Yeah. So yeah, so start wrapping it up. Yeah. Got it. Exactly. That's now, good. See, I haven't should had do that, that at the Cove Bar. I've not been pushed out. I mean, they let you buy two drinks, and you know, your time just runs its course, and then you leave. Like I've never. Yeah. Yeah, and the told. two times I was there, they didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. The first time I went, the service was horrible. The guy forgot us every time he walked away from us. He came back to the table every time and like acted like he didn't know us. Mm-hmm. And it took like, I don't know, a half an hour for for anybody to even come to our table and ask us if we were ready. So I was like, well, um, this better not count as our 45 minutes because you guys have ignored us for a half an hour. And then he brought... He brought two drinks to my friend, and then the other four drinks the rest of the table had ordered didn't show up for another like twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah, the my first, first night, though. The, I mean, yeah, the reservation worked and everything worked fine, but I don't know. Maybe it was just a server himself. But that that first time I went, I was like, "This is not that great. I don't understand the hoopla." Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I went in, went ahead and went in again last night because my husband wanted the the beer flight yeah plank board with the teeth so <laughs> i had to drink beer and i hate beer but you see my post on on online about it yeah <laughs> but um yeah last night was a much better experience i sat in a different area because i saw that same server and i was like oh god please don't sit us with that guy again <laughs> and when we passed his area i was like oh yay so um yeah we had a much better server she was very attentive she was moving about just doing her job real well uh she knows where it's at and uh, we all got our drinks at the same time and, you know, we got to enjoy ourselves together. And um, we got in there. We got in there pretty late. So we ended up just stay, we were just there until they closed. So we actually saw the whole place like uh, it was kind of neat. So like right at midnight, um, Rex is like finishing up a song and then he starts talking and the lights like dim and go really bright and they they look like he's like shorting the place out and he says something about oh sorry about that and and uh he says something about it being the end of the night and it's time for closing and he's gonna get shut down and then he just kind of goes and then all the lights go out and then like like the regular lights come on and they're like okay it's the end of the night finish up (laughs) so that was kind of neat to be in there for the end of the night uh show i guess they probably do the same little routine every night Mm -hmm. uh right at closing so i thought that was pretty neat and it was cool to like see the place empty out and you could actually get a look at it um without anybody in there that's neat so yeah i've Mm -hmm. I've, i definitely had finally had a good experience in the cantina as well so see it could happen it just you know you went the very first time a few times as they as they work the bugs out exactly all right, Jess, I'm glad you got the memo from Disney and, and, and from Diz Geek. You know, got to turn it around, girl. Hey, I like I said, you know, a cast preview, I was not really expecting much. I knew that it was not going to be, you know, perfect. Um, mm-hmm. But sometimes you do expect more from people who have transferred over from other areas. There's nobody new in that land. Everybody's already been working for the company for a long time. Right. So yeah. you kind of expect a little bit more from that kind of a, you know, cast. Um, but yeah, cool- they are they are improving every single day. I think because now I've gone three times total, and each time it's been a little bit better than the last time. So, you know, they're figuring one it I, out. I, one, one thing I thought was kind of cool for the cast is that they get a whole wardrobe of clothes, and they can mix and match any way they want. Oh yeah, it is really cool. They get like, like four shirts and three pairs of pants and. They can mix and match any way they want, and they get accessories and stuff, which is so cool. So they can actually dress for work. Every yeah, day everybody can make their about. costume like their own. Yeah, their own concoction. It's pretty neat. So, did anyone get a, a lightsaber or a droid or anything like that? Or are you holding off on that stuff for now? I'm going to hold off on the droid uh, mainly because I'm sure they're going to add new stuff later on, like they did with the droid, the tiny droid factory. Right. You right, know what right. I mean? The one in Star Tours shop where mm-hmm. they add like. Christmas hats and things like that. Uh, I'm going to wait and see if they do stuff like that. Um, lightsabers, you couldn't pay me enough to do that unless you paid me $200 <laughs> to go do it. So I would just get a free lightsaber. Other than that, uh, no, no, thank you. I'll watch it on YouTube. I, 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 I watched it on YouTube. 
Yeah, I want to do it so bad. But I you can't, I'll almost never do it. watching the damn video. I almost cried. Like, yeah. oh my god, that was just the coolest thing. Yeah, I've my ever friend seen. did it last night, and I waited at the at one of the seating areas while they did it. Um, I just watched the fireworks and had dessert while they were doing that. And she, when she got out of there, she was like, "I almost cried." Do not judge me. And I was like, yeah. "Judge you, I will not." It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> if you want to cry about getting a lightsaber, it's awesome. I mean, they really, really know you. how to get your emotions in that. Yeah, because because yeah. then you walk so... out of there, you're not thinking what you just dropped two hundred or three whatever two hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you're thinking like, "Oh my god, oh my!" God. It's just so neat. It's yeah. So she was neat. giddy the rest of the night about her lightsaber. I just thought it was the cutest thing ever. I, I they're so. Like you've seen these type of lightsabers before, especially if you've gone to like uh, like Comic Con or WonderCon or any of these kind of cons. But a lot of people don't realize that like they make that type of a lightsaber, uh, yeah. with where where it's the glowing stick and it makes the sound and it looks like especially if you look at it on a camera or a video camera or something like that it looks like it looks in the movie. It looks mm. real. Yeah. And so when you see this video. And they all turn it on at the same time and they all lift it up at the same time. And everyone yeah. in that room is just like, oh, they're just freaking out because a lot of people don't see a lightsaber that looks like that. You're, you're used to seeing the toy at Target or something like that. And this mm -hmm. looks like the real thing. And then the music's like, oh, and they're like, to the spark. And it's just like, oh my God, it's so cool. You know what's kind of interesting is that they made this all up, this whole story about the lightsaber and Savi's oh, yeah. everything up. I mean, this is not in any movie or, or anything like that. So they they could make it as emotional and as, you know, woo-woo, <laughs> spiritual and stuff like that. Well, I they, mean. Could, they, they, could, they could push it to the nth degree. And, you know, e e oh, gosh, you know, when I first saw it, it kind of, it, it kind of took me back to – you know, when my my brother and I, you, you know, we first saw Star Wars, and of course, you know, uh, in, what do you want to do when you're a kid? You know, you want to go and play lightsabers with, with your brother or something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can so, I? So you know, it's just like, it's like, yeah, it just that's what it kind of brought me back to. Can I, I give a spoiler? It, so. Can I give a spoiler for it? Sure, Chris, I don't want to yeah, spoil it for anyone. Okay. When you're like, they do Yoda come. Yoda doesn't come out, but you hear Yoda, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Rise, you are, are." You know, he like it's and it's just like the room kind of turns green. It plays his music, his theme, and he's like, "Look on you, you must, you know." And it's damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's it. it you yeah, know. we might do it eventually because my husband did want to do it. But I told him during the cast preview, I was like, well, we're not going to do it if we can't, you know, record it because I want to be able to like relive. That I think I think you could, so many people are recording it. It's on YouTube. There's yeah. people with cameras and the cast members aren't doing anything about it. They're, it's not like the video that I've seen is like they're being sneaky or something like no, that. No, no, it's because right. the we went. weren't allowed to have our phones and yeah. do anything. So I'm like, uh, so I'm not going to pay $200 to do this experience and not have any record of it. Absolutely. No, right. So I told him, I said, we can come back and do it one day, but we're not doing it now at the cast preview. Like, no way. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're letting people record. You know, right now. Excuse me? No, I was just saying, they're letting people record. You could record the droid. Right. There's oh, yeah, plenty yeah. of videos of the Millennium Falcon ride. Like, they don't seem to be stopping oh, yeah, anybody from now. recording. <laughs> and a lot of rides are stingy like that, you know? And, and But I think the reason why they want to is that it gets it gets it out there, and it, it's, it's, it's free advertising. Yeah, think of all yeah. the advertising Disney's gotten out of <laughs> this whole launch of this land. Yeah. It's It's yeah. amazing. And Are there a lot of billboards? The reservation and stuff? system has worked so well. Oh yeah. I mean, and people are like saying, "I can't believe that there's no lines." I mean, I was listening to KFI radio, and they were talking about uh, one of the uh, shows, Gary and Shannon. They were talking about this, uh, Star Wars: Galaxy's Edge, and they were, you know, commenting. They spent a whole segment commenting about how the lines are shorter at Disneyland because the galaxy's edge and the reservation system had worked so well. And, you know, and they were talking about, and then today they were talking about, 
Um, yeah, more of that stuff. It's just, uh, you know, you can't, you know, to get somebody to talk about your, sh- you know, on a major radio station to talk about your, you know, your business for 30 minutes or so is is worth millions and millions Genius. of dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lots of people it, pay lots of money for that. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. And so, uh, you know, what's kind of interesting is that you have these spaces such as the droid building and the laser and the lightsaber building you know in the future we're going to see more of this stuff happen in yeah not only galaxy's edge but i think in adventure land and and in tomorrow land and frontier Ooh, in land in adventure land can i build my own hippo shooting gun <laughs> there you go exactly <laughs> <laughs> They'll have an animatronic rock, um, the, the rock, driving the boat. Oh, no, no. I'm just Don't looking into that. the future. I, you know, there's just, I think there's just... Aim at the lot. hippo cupcake! Oh, God. I, you, I, know, you, you didn't smell that coming, did you? <laughs> I'll, I'll I write think the that, script. Okay, that's good. But I think that they what they've learned is that these experiences, such as building your own droid, building your own lightsaber, is just as important and, and as an experience as the attraction like the Millennium Falcon um, Smuggler's Run attraction is, and soon to be uh, the Rise of the Resistance attraction. These are all important experiences that play in the development and shaping of the land. Mm. Amazing. Last time I took a crew out, I hit rock bottom. <laughs> all right, so is that all we got on Galaxy's Edge? Or do you think we're good? No. Well, no you know, I, I, Dude, I, guys. I, I think there's, there's so there's much so more. Much- because, again, there's so many things that are going. We haven't even seen any of, like, any of the shows, like the interaction between Ray I did. and okay I did. go ahead, go I, ahead. Saw it, I saw it on day two I saw a bunch of Girl Scouts pushing away Kylo Ren with Ray and Chewbacca with the force that's cool yeah and uh you know stormtroopers standing on the roofs above talking to each other mm-hmm. um I saw Kylo Ren coming out of that TIE fighter which was cool I saw that uh, and then he like the- did the death choke on the guy yeah, lots of really cool stuff. Yeah, like that going on. I wish there were more aliens, though. That's the thing I don't understand. Like that's the easiest thing you. I think it'd be cool and seeing droids uh, walk around or roll around the roll around. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully that 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 comes because I mean, it doesn't feel yeah as active as it could be. I mean, and now's the time to do it. Like if it, if it was an open. You know, anyone can come in kind of situation. I would understand that they didn't have a million droids driving around. But this is a very specific, uh, you know, only certain amounts of people are allowed in at a time kind of situation. Yeah, this, this, be the, this, this is the time the they should time. be doing it. This is sure. the time. This is the time to test those types of things like the aliens walking around and, and the droids, you know, rolling around. Yeah. But, you know, they're not doing it. And it has me concerned that they won't be doing it. Yeah. Speaking about droids rolling around and uh, walking around and standing around, R two D two. Do you see R two D two in the mm-hmm. droid shop? Yeah, he's for sale for twenty five thousand dollars. Yes, and That's I all? understand. I, <laughs> I understand that three of them have already been sold. No way. Yeah. It has oh. it has a lifetime <laughs> warranty, and it's remote controlled. And if you damage it in any way, they'll fix it. And uh, it's custom, so you can change the colors and everything. Wow. Do you get yeah, an AP but, discount? But still, it's twenty five. No, you do not. But it's still $25,000. So I, I still won't be purchasing it as it costs more than my car. Um, right. But <laughs> Can I get my AP discount? No, you cannot. Damn. Almost as much as Club 33. You know, oh, that I is think I'd rather really have a droid 
<laughs> I'd rather have a droid than go to than having a club thirty three. <laughs> Well, yeah, because they'd be have by me all the time. To Somebody up. talk to me, right? Exactly. Yeah. At least with the droid, it's a one-time price. At Club Thirty Three, it's, it's a one-time huge price, and then price another and then huge fee every year. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not I to think about to... the expensive think... dinner or brunch, depending on when you. You know in. what? We talk about this twenty-five thousand dollar droid, two hundred dollar lightsaber seems cheap now. Right. Guys, yeah, I, I think they're about to sell their fourth droid. <laughs> Just <Really>? saying. <laughs> When you go My dad's to slowly um, convincing himself. No. <laughs> when you go to oh Star Wars Celebration, I, I went to Star Wars Celebration in Anaheim. There's droids everywhere, and they're just kind of wandering around. And the owners are like, they, they, there's these people who custom build them themselves. They're kind of, you know, a few people behind walking with the remote control behind their back. You can see them. But like, if they can't have, if they can have droids rolling around there, there, I see no reason why they can't do that. It's, yeah, guys, bring it over. I wanted to see, like, they they had so many great alien costumes and stuff that showed up at Star Wars Celebration Yeah, to promote the new movies, like the costumes and the, the puppets for the, for the movies. And, like, mm-hmm. just bring them over here. I mean, Disney does a great job, especially out in California, of, you know, walking, um, walking with characters and things like that. Yeah. They're very good. They're very good at that kind of stuff. So I don't see why they can't. They can't do that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Exactly. Like, there's no way everyone that lives on Batuu is a human, except for Doc Ondar, who's sitting behind a cage the whole time. Right. <laughs> there's no way. And Hondo. Yeah, and Hondo. Exactly. They should have happy Hondo days at... <laughs> <laughs> what? Right. No. Yeah, right. at Disneyland, you know? Have, you know. <laughs> Guys, oh my god, Go on my hut. second... I don't think I told you guys on my second time into uh, into Galaxy's Edge uh, when w- I went on the the Millennium Falcon attraction. When I was leaving, mm-hmm. I found a, a Rathtar frozen in carbonite in the hole. It was awesome. What? Yeah. Where did you find that? It was in the hole. At the exit. Oh. Oh. Weird. I must have done better. I got like fifty. Oh percent on my last try <laughs> oh interesting interesting yeah. this is interesting it is, is you know again we're, i think we're going to be discovering lots of different nooks and crannies and hidden well, mickeys and surprises as we go along yeah well yeah i think that was the whole intention of of the brand <laughs> right right exactly to be so interactive and immersed in everything and just have stuff everywhere and you're never gonna see it all because they're gonna change things and add things. And I can't wait for Rise of the Resistance to open. Oh, I mean, I can't you either. can already you can already see like a little bit of the queue. There's this giant waterfall back there that just looks beautiful. It's gonna be some great pictures. I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. So I would give it a ten out of ten. I agree. Really? It's and I, and I'm and I thought I would. You know, I, I you've heard me say on other shows that I'm, I'm pretty up. I was not very happy with them putting star Wars land in Disneyland. Uh, I wanted to have its own land. I wanted to have its own park. Um, but you know what? I'm happy with what we have here right now. And it is what it is. There's no changing. There's no going back. And I was actually, I was very blown away. By the size and scope and depth and immersiveness of the of the land. Uh, sorry about my gravity, gravelly voice. It's but um, grading, it's grading, Tommy. Grading my grading voice. Sorry about that. But I think it's it's definitely a great experience, and um, it really makes Disneyland special. And uh, it's really cool. That's. Yeah. What I have to say, they did a great, the Imagineers, everyone did a great job, and they're doing a great job. It's awesome, guys. All right, there ten you have it. Ten. Great park. <laughs> there you have it, y'all. Uh, I think we presented both sides pretty well. It's not even a bad side. It's just like, it's just, you know, there are some truths about it. It can be a bit overpriced with the food and the stuff, you know, compared to other items at Disneyland. 
you know, that's but yeah. it's a new land. They, of course, of course, they're going to do it. Uh, I wonder if the the food prices are as expensive as Knott's Berry Farm because for 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 a lot of people that complain about prices about uh, Disneyland food, I got to tell you, have you gone now? Have you gone to Knott's Berry Farm? It's pretty bad. No, it's and worse. You only get a ten percent discount with the with the pass over there. You don't even get fifteen or twenty. Yeah. So I don't want to hear. Great. It. And the <laughs> honestly, I I had the fried chicken, the or Andorian, whatever. <laughs> Over at over Tip at the yep. docking bay, yeah, the the fried and Dorian and uh, not my favorite thing I've ever had, but pretty decent. But I had so that too. expensive, it was seventeen dollars. Yeah, every yeah, everything's too much. Like guys, you could literally go over to the Plaza Inn and have fried chicken that's ten times better for less money or mm -hmm. for about the same price. Guys, come on. Yeah, I I didn't want to buy mashed potatoes that looked like crap <laughs> because it looked like alien mashed potatoes you know i wasn't paying an extra don't you, five don't you dollars think for should it be like, like served on rice probably because they put salsa verde on top of it yeah it makes the mashed potatoes very squishy it's really now, the, weird yeah i mean it's not bad like no the it all tastes bad. good it's, but i think it's good using but the like, wrong carb that's all <laughs> but but guys come on Low, lower those prices. Can I tell you? Can I? Can I talk about my favorite? My favorite detail. Sure. In yeah. all of Galaxy's Edge that I saw. All right. So we were walking around waiting for our our reservation for Ogas, right? And we walk into the marketplace, and then we see this little woodcrafter. This little oh, woodcrafter section, right? Too. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. And Becca's like, oh my god, do they sell this 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 statue? And it's a it's like a porg. And Becca's like, I want that. And I'm like, no, I, I don't think these are for sale. Then we go into the cantina, and then the porg mug is that statue. So, mm -hmm. in other words, the guy created the mold over there, and then they had, and then they sell you what the product eventually became in the cantina. Yeah, nice. That's so cool. That's yeah. so cool, guys. <laughs> and then your father-in-law paid for it. I offered <laughs> to pay for it. Okay, you said no. <laughs> I had my card out. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. All right. I think we're going to wrap it up. But, you know, we, we want to talk about everything that Galaxy Edge has to offer. And we want to be real about it. You know, we, we I, I can't stand the thought of just, you know, everything's perfect. You know, we, we got to keep it real. My, my number my number one complaint is still a complaint is the is the whole aliens and droids thing. Like, I, I don't I, I cannot understand for the life of me. Why they're not doing that? Yeah, but other than that, I loved it. <laughs> All right, there you have it, y'all. Show notes for this episode is going to be at disgeek.com slash one fifty four. You can like us on uh, Facebook, and we're also on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I'm at disgeek podcast over there. Tommy, where are you at? Uh, I'm on the disgeek podcast. Tommy picks T O M M Y P I X on Inst on Twitter, that's it. And then you can also find me at my other show, the Cruise Dudes Podcast, uh, thecruisedudes.com, the Cruise Dudes on all social media media places. That's where you have the most grating voice in, in cruising podcasts. In cruising, yes, the most grating voice in cruising <laughs> over there as well. And also, you can read my digital magazine, the most grating digital <laughs> magazine, Seawin at seawinmag.com. <laughs> Hey Chris, I, I'm that. gonna ask you every time. What's your Twitter? Yeah. What's your Twitter? Uh, I refuse to answer. However, <laughs> I am now commandeering the Instagram account for the Diz Geek podcast because I was a fool and bought a pass. So, <laughs> oops. <laughs> That's good for me. Uh, all right. I know, right? Uh, Jess, where can everyone find you? Jess Jones, 1976. And then uh, Connie Moreno is at Mouse County. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Till the spires. Till the spires. I refuse to speak in that language. I heard, I heard they got Betrayed. They got rid of younglings. No, they no, still have it. That, was, that yep. was literally just a side comment from one random person that someone tweeted that got <laughs> sent to a trillion different places. <laughs> And it's not even like an official thing. It was just like a side comment. Nice. Bye-bye. Yeah.
It's a nice day if you wake up in Disneyland.